Before you set out on a bicycle trip, be sure that your bicycle is in good shape. Of course, it has to be the right size bicycle and be adjusted to fit you. It also has to be outfitted with all the safety equipment required in your state and community. A last minute safety check won't take too much time and the time it does take is well worth it. You don't want any breakdowns, blowouts or fall offs on your trip. Check to see if your headlamp is in good working order. Do your tires have the correct air pressure in them? And finally, check your brakes by taking your bike on a short test run. You must have good working brakes to drive on the street. As you can see, a bicycle is made for one person to drive. Driving double leads to trouble no matter where you are. Your bike was built for one person, and that's you. There, your bike is ready to go, but are you? If you need to carry anything on a bike trip, such as a waterproof jacket in case of rain, be sure to put it in a small backpack that will not interfere with your bicycle driving. So let's go, but let's go safely. And that includes stopping at the end of your driveway. Look left, right, and left again for traffic before entering the street. On a day like this, it's great to own a bike. You can see so much more, feel so much more. Besides, you are in command of how far you go and how fast. Hi, are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, let's follow the rules of the road. You drive it in much the same way an automobile driver drives a car. The basic rule for driving a safe vehicle, and that includes your bike, is to obey all the traffic signs and signals you see. A stop sign is one of the most important. This means you must stop and look for oncoming traffic in the intersection. When there is no traffic, cross the intersection quickly. This sign is to tell drivers that a school crosswalk is nearby and to watch for children. And this means there is a crosswalk ahead where school children cross the street. A bike driver has to watch for school children just as much as a car driver does. You should know what all the signs on the road mean and what you are supposed to do when you see them. You should always use your left hand to tell other vehicles when you intend to stop or turn. This hand signal indicates that you are going to slow down and stop. It is best to signal for at least half a block or a hundred feet before you stop or turn. This hand signal is for a left turn. This hand signal is for a right turn. Automobiles sometimes fail to notice bicycles, so drive defensively. Remember, you are not as protected on a bike as in a car. Cars can go much faster than you, and they are much heavier as well. So never argue with them. Instead, let them go first.
If you intend to turn where there is no stop sign, you should still make a hand signal so that vehicles behind you know what you're going to do. It is, of course, important that people see you at all times when you drive your bike. But it's very important for them to see you when you are about to make a left turn, because it's the most dangerous. It's especially important to remember this when you approach an intersection with traffic lights. Traffic lights are placed in intersections with heavy automobile traffic, and you should not try to drive through them. If you want to turn left or just cross the street, get off your bike, press the button if there is one, and wait for a green light or walk signal. Cross the street as you would if you were a pedestrian. First to one intersection, then to the other. This is called squaring the corner, and it's the safest way to make a left turn at a busy intersection. If you do not feel safe where there is heavy automobile traffic, remember you can always get off your bike and walk as a pedestrian if you want to. Or if there is a bikeway alongside the busy highway, drive on it. and watch for parked vehicles, because you never know what the other guy is going to do. He may do this, or this, or this. If a car stops in the street like this, you must signal with your hand and stop. Avoid driving your bike in heavy traffic. Drive your bike reasonably and responsibly. And this means drive in single file. It's not only dangerous, but against the law in some states to drive your bike alongside another. Drive with the flow of traffic, not against it, and keep to the right. You should be aware of road conditions as you drive your bike, watch out for obvious hazards, and exercise more caution on wet streets where your tires might slip. If you drive down a steep hill, slow up before starting downhill. And if you have gears on your bike, shift to the high gear. Use good judgment with your speed and only drive as fast as is safe for you. Remember, good brakes and control of your bike are very important when you are driving fast. By now, it might seem to you that there are more bike rules and regulations than there are parts on a bicycle. And there are a lot of signs, signals, and rules to remember. That's why bike trips are so much fun. Because where there are no people and no other traffic, you can use your bike for sports and just plain fun. Driving here, there are no road signs, so you must rely completely on your common sense. Because you can have an accident here just as easily as you can in the city. While you are driving in the country, watch for bumps, rocks, and other road hazards. Don't ever go so fast that you aren't able to stop safely and quickly. All of these rules and regulations, both in the country and in the city, are really made for you. 
They are made in hopes that you won't be involved in one of the million bicycle accidents that happen each year. An accident can happen because a reckless bicycle driver, like this one, didn't follow the rules of the road, or because he drove an unsafe bike. If you fail to follow the rules of the road, you may, like any other vehicle on the street, be stopped because you have become a hazard to others and to yourself. Most likely, this won't happen to you if you keep your bike in good condition and if you use common sense while driving it. And common sense includes knowing when to start home after your trip is done. After a good morning and afternoon of driving, it's smart to head home well before dark. After all, the rules of the road were made for you so you can drive safely.